Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a comedy and horror movie called Chompy and the Girls. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. 24-year-old Jackson is a troubled young woman who has a lot of issues in life. One day, she ties a noose to her fan and doesn't hesitate to hang herself. However, the fan falls out of the ceiling and she lands on her feet, spoiling her plans. Meanwhile, in a separate town, a man named Sam Gladwell comes home to his wife, Deborah, who is barely paying interest in everything he's saying. Later on, Deborah completely shuts Sam up, saying that she can't focus on her work with him blabbering in the background. Although he is secretly hurt, Sam just focuses on his new opened parcel, containing some cowboy boots that don't suit him at all. Back at Jackson's messy apartment, things aren't looking too good. She's now stuck with the loose ceiling fan and her crippling depression. Desperate for some company, she calls her mom, but she gets dismissed immediately. For this reason, she calls her dealer, Tony, and casually asks him if he wants to hang out later that night. But he instead reminds her of a chapel party that she's invited to. Still, Jackson stays persistent and asks if Tony wants to hang out before the party, but he says they don't have that kind of relationship and refuses. Now realizing that she has nobody, Jackson sulks on the floor and cries her frustrations away. Meanwhile, back at Sam's place, things are also not going well when Deborah gets irritated that he bought sandwiches for dinner. Although Sam bought food without her asking for it, his thoughtfulness gets shoved down the drain since sandwiches aren't dinner food. Although this is not the reaction he's expecting, Sam claims accountability for his actions and later receives a text from a woman named Addie Jackson, claiming to be his daughter. At first, Sam doesn't believe the text, but he learns that Clarice Jackson is the mother, whom he dated for a year in college. When the truth finally sinks into his head, Sam agrees to meet with his so-called daughter in their local park. Before he leaves, Deborah points out the cowboy shoes he's sporting and laughs at them. However, Sam still goes out wearing them. Moments after, Sam arrives in the park and finds that Jackson is already there. He immediately approaches his daughter, and they catch up for a bit until he backs out of the whole parenting situation. For this reason, Jackson argues that she doesn't aim to move in with him, but her indecisive father says that he didn't even know she existed, and everything is all too sudden. As they decide to go their separate ways, an extremely disturbing and gruesome event occurs before their eyes. Across the street, Sam and Jackson witness a man with an enormous mouth swallow a girl alive. As if this isn't a horrifying scene already, the man quickly walks towards them, forcing Sam and Jackson to go into their separate cars and flee. Later that night, Sam gets sick thinking about the incident at the park while Jackson does some research about the man. With two cigarettes in her mouth, she focuses on her work but can't find anything helpful. Suddenly, she hears a thud on her door, so she bravely opens it and finds no one outside. Thinking that she's already safe, Jackson attempts to walk back to her computer when the man from the park suddenly barges into her house and soon opens his enormous mouth. He walks towards Jackson, holding a broom to defend herself, and when she fails to stab him, she's left with no choice but to run out of her house and head to Sam's. Not long after, Jackson welcomes herself into her father's home and catches him making a midnight snack. Although Sam is confused about how she got in, Jackson just rams on about what happened earlier and convinces him to leave or they'll get eaten too. However, Sam doesn't want to go with her and it's not long until they start arguing and screaming. The commotion wakes Deborah up and she catches the two of them together and now she thinks of Jackson as a mistress. However, Jackson simply introduces herself as Sam's daughter, catching Deborah off guard. Later on, Sam emphasizes that he doesn't want to leave, so Jackson threatens him with a sharp knife. Because of this, he pathetically attempts to throw a tiny butter knife at his daughter, which barely makes an impact. While Jackson forces her father to wear his shoes, Deborah looks out of the window and sees that the man with the enormous mouth is approaching their house. Thinking that the man is after him and Jackson, Sam is left with no choice but to leave to ensure his wife's safety. However, Deborah hands him a ridiculous beanie to wear before their departure. A few moments later, Sam is in the passenger seat while his daughter drives to the chapel party, where they'll pick up Jackson's friend, Lotus. Jackson explains that Lotus is a paranormal expert who happens to have tons of books that could help them discover what the man from the park is. On their way to the party, Sam receives a call from his wife, but Jackson tells him not to answer it and keep their location confidential. However, the missed call makes Deborah anxious, so she leaves a voice message for her husband. Later on, Sam texts her their current location and she immediately leaves to go after them. Shortly, Sam and Jackson arrive at the chapel party, which has tons of alcohol, drugs, wasted people, and posters of Jesus and the crucifix. After swimming through the blasphemous display, they finally find Lotus and tell him that he is needed to assess a paranormal situation. Although Jackson has only introduced the young girl at the park, Lotus immediately concludes that it's a Rixella, an interdimensional parasite that feeds on people. However, Jackson tells him that it's not about the girl but the man with the enormous mouth, and she goes on and explains it in detail. But Lotus gets distracted when he notices a guy trying to spike a girl at the party. Because of this, Lotus grabs the girl's cup and drinks it himself, making him high and incapable of helping Sam and Jackson. Not long after, Lotus confronts the guy who later punches him in the face. 
However, with all the alcohol and drugs giving him confidence, he bites the guy's leg, causing it to bleed. The scene quickly becomes chaotic, so Sam and Jackson take Lotus out of the party and into his house. On their way to their wasted companion's home, they find a little girl from the park, and they immediately approach her. Although the girl seems scared and confused, Jackson relentlessly interrogates her while Sam counters it with a more gentle approach. Throughout their conversation, they discover that the girl's name is Birch and that she needs help to find her parents. While Sam tells Jackson to change her intimidating tone, Chompy, a name they use to address the man with the big mouth, suddenly appears and quickly walks towards them. Because of this, they drag Birch into the car with them and immediately escape. Later on, they arrive at Lotus's house and Jackson immediately separates herself from the group to secretly snort some drugs, which Sam catches her doing. Because of this, he takes the tiny Ziploc bag containing the drugs and pours it out, making Jackson upset. Soon after, they decide to enter the house, but Birch doesn't want to leave the car. So, Sam carries her inside instead. Once they're inside the house, Jackson tries to make Lotus sleep and later checks out one of his books that can help them discover what Chompy is. However, when she leaves the room, she finds Birch hovering over Sam, who is on the floor with his eyes open and his body petrified. Birch immediately flees after getting caught, leaving Jackson worried about her father's state. She later tries tapping his face, but when she hears no response, she starts to believe that Sam might be dead. However, Sam gasps loudly, making Jackson surprised but relieved to know that he's alive. Later on, as she explains that Birch might be a Rixella, Sam suddenly loses his balance and falls to the floor. He quickly removes his left boot and he is horrified to see that his foot has shrunk, making it look like a baby's. While he panics and screams, Jackson desperately tries to hold her laughter by crumpling a piece of paper and using it to fill in the gap in Sam's shoes. However, the situation is too much for Sam, so he texts Deborah to pick him up. But Jackson protests because his foot will stay that way and Chompy will still come to get him. Later on, Jackson realizes that it's more about the relationship as father and daughter that Sam wants to back out of. This hurts and disappoints her, so she attempts to leave the house but immediately shuts the door again when she finds Chompy outside. Limping, Sam heads outside to talk to Chompy while Jackson hides behind him. Although he comprehensively explains how Birch attacked him and how he ended up with a small foot, the man just stares at them and doesn't utter a word. For this reason, Jackson steps forward and asks Chompy if he needs her help. Suddenly, he smiles, kneels, and then opens his enormous mouth and points at it, suggesting that he wants them to enter. Oddly enough, Jackson agrees and dives into the mouth, leaving Sam with no choice but to go after her. Inside, Sam and Jackson find that they're in another dimension, which means that Chompy's mouth is a portal that leads there. As they look around, they suddenly hear a voice that introduces itself as Talon. Talon can't speak in his physical form, so he brings them into another dimension where he explains how he is in pursuit of a Rixella. In this case, it's Birch and she aims to assimilate every human being into an exact replication of herself. This would explain Sam's foot, which is an unfinished assimilation. Talon also explains that he will swallow the assimilated victims and he will heal them, leaving the Rixella to be destroyed. However, he reminds Sam and Jackson that nobody should be alerted of his existence or the mission will be compromised. They both agree to this, leaving the dimension with reassured minds. As Sam and Jackson step into the outside world, they laugh in joy knowing that Chompy will take care of everything while they go on with their lives. Although he can't speak, tears of joy come out of Chompy's eyes and he leaves shortly after. Meanwhile, Deborah is approaching Lotus's house and bumps into something massive. To Sam and Jackson's horror, it's their savior, Chompy, and now Deborah just killed him. For this matter, Jackson screams at Deborah, and she later tells Sam to help her move the body into the house. Unsure of what to do next, the three of them get into one car, and Jackson takes them to Peter's Pancakes because she hasn't eaten in 12 hours. Later on, she lashes out in the restaurant and pours some syrup all over the table just to piss off Deborah and Sam. The waitress sees all of this, so Jackson, Sam, and Deborah are left with no choice but to leave and look for Birch instead. In the car, Sam instructs which direction to take because he can sense it in his foot. True enough, they find Birch along with many other versions of herself. Later on, Jackson manages to abduct one of them, and Deborah helps her place Birch in the trunk. However, a man witnesses the scene, so Jackson jumps at him and scares him away. Later in the car, Deborah and Sam talk about their unhealthy relationship, and they soon introduce the idea of getting a divorce. Jackson, who is driving everyone to her house, awkwardly pretends that she's not listening to them. Not long after, they reach their destination and they immediately bring Birch inside and tie her up. But little do they know that Birch is summoning the other replications of herself to head to Jackson's house. Soon enough, the place is surrounded by other replications of Birch, causing Sam, Jackson, and Deborah to prevent them from breaking in. Meanwhile, Lotus calls Jackson and tells her that he found Chompy's body and that he's unable to enter her house due to the other replications of Birch. Later on in the call, Jackson and Lotus conclude that the portal to Chompy's mouth might still be open, so tossing the girls inside could potentially work. 
Suddenly, Sam realizes that he's lost sight of Deborah, and when he finds her, the replications have already breached the house, and one is starting a simulation over Deborah's unconscious body. Seeing this, Sam attacks the replication and carries his wife to the bathroom, where they're temporarily safe. However, Jackson selflessly runs outside to toss the girls into Chompy's mouth manually. However, in doing so, she gets shoved inside as well. Inside, she finds Birch, who later explains that something is making her do things that she has no control over, such as transforming people into replications of herself. Because of this, Jackson tells Birch to pass the burden to her and when the little girl refuses, Jackson embraces her and allows the Rixella to enter her body. Later on, she tells Birch to leave while she summons the replications of herself to enter Chompy's mouth. One by one, the assimilated people get healed, and soon after, Sam enters the portal after being turned into a replication. However, he suddenly sees Jackson agonizing in pain. Seeing his daughter's situation, he walks over to her and successfully pulls the Rixella out of her body, making her feel relieved but also weak. At first, they couldn't jump out of the portal, but then Lotus throws her open side and they successfully make it out alive. Outside, everyone is back to their old selves, and Birch finally gets reunited with her family. Meanwhile, Deborah and Sam are pushing for their divorce, and Jackson also apologizes for her previous actions. She also admits to Sam that she needs help, so they rekindle the relationship. Finally, Jackson addresses Sam as her father. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.